If you're interested in hiking down below the rim of the Grand Canyon, you should consider going in the wintertime. In this video, I'll show you how and why to hike in the Grand Canyon during the winter. Let's take a look at why you would want a winter hike in the Grand Canyon. The first reason to hike in the Grand Canyon in the wintertime is it's much less crowded. Good morning. How are you There's even morning? fewer mules on the trails. Not bad. It's also easier to get a backcountry permit. I always hike in the winter in the Grand Canyon, and I just walk up to the backcountry office and I've never had an issue getting a permit for the areas that I want to camp in the day of the hike. In addition to getting a backcountry permit, it's a lot easier to get in for a meal at Phantom Ranch. If you'd always wanted to enjoy a steak at Phantom Ranch, but could never get a reservation during the summertime, <laughs> consider going during the winter. One of the opportunities that's not available to you when you're backpacking in the summertime is to stay at the yurt on the North Rim. The yurt is only open to hikers during the winter months. One of the great things about winter hiking in the Grand Canyon is you don't have to deal with the heat. It's a lot easier to hike when it's 50 degrees out than it is when it's 107 degrees. You also don't have to worry as much about consuming as much water. There's also a unique beauty to the Grand Canyon during the winter, especially when there's snow up on the rim. The low sun angle during the winter time really brings out the colors of the red wall. You also don't have to worry as much about varmints. The rattlesnakes are hibernating and the scorpions are asleep. Now let's talk about some of the challenges with winter hiking in the Grand Canyon. First of all, it can be tough getting there. If there's a snowstorm around Flagstaff or Williams, you'll have to drive in wintry conditions. So make sure you're comfortable driving in the snow and that you have a vehicle that's prepared for it. Another challenge is dealing with the snow and the ice on the trail, particularly near the rim. The first hour or the last hour as you climb up or down into the Grand Canyon can be snowy and icy, especially when the sun has hit the snow and the hikers have packed down the snow to make ice. It gets cold at night in the desert, even at the bottom of the canyon, so bring an extra heavy sleeping bag and layers to keep yourself warm at night. There isn't as much access to water in the Grand Canyon during the winter as there is during the summer. Some of the spigots freeze and the Park Service turns them off during the winter time. So check with the Park Service to make sure you know where the water access points are. Also, make sure you bring water treatment so that you can drink out of the creeks and streams to replenish your water supply. With the shorter days, you'll have less time to hike, so it's more likely that you'll have to hike in the dark, either early in the morning or late in the evening. So bring a headlamp that you're comfortable hiking in the dark with. So what are some of the best trails for hiking in the Grand Canyon in the wintertime? One of my favorites is the Clear Creek Trail. It's the equivalent of the Tonto Trail for the North Rim. It has open vistas throughout its entire length and has absolutely no shade, making it a miserable hike in the summertime. But during the wintertime, you're hiking in your shirt sleeves. Next is the Tanner Trail. It's 10 miles of sunshine, which again during the summertime is miserable, especially since there's no water anywhere along the trail. But during the winter time, it's a beautiful hike. Also, the South Kaibab. The park rangers don't often recommend use of the South Kaibab during the summertime because of its exposure and uh, constant sunshine and no shade. But during the winter time, it's a beautiful hike. The only issue is there's no water anywhere along the South Kaibab in the winter time. Now let's talk about some gear needs for hiking in the Grand Canyon in winter. First of all, I highly recommend the use of trekking poles in the winter time. When you're hiking on snow and ice, it really helps to have four points of contact and with the ground at all times and uh, really has saved my bacon on numerous occasions. It's highly recommended that you bring some sort of traction device for your feet. I like the Vargo titanium cleats, but yak tracks are very popular. They're sold by the National Park Service up on the south rim. Catula micro spikes are also a very popular option. Now let's talk a little bit about footwear during Grand Canyon winters. I like to go minimalist, so pictured here are my Merrill trail gloves on the Tonto Trail. Sometimes when I need a little bit more traction and foot protection from rocks, I'll use trail runners. So in this case, I'm using them on the Clear Creek Trail with Dirty Girl Gators. In my most recent trip, I was concerned with snow on the north rim so in that case I was using waterproof gaiters, uh, in this case with Keen shoes. The waterproof gaiters will definitely help keeping your feet dry in powdery snow. Make sure you dress in layers. You're going to be warm when you're hiking in the sun and cold at shady rest stops and at night. So there's quite a bit of putting on and taking off layers when you're winter hiking in the Grand Canyon. Just a quick word or two about stoves. You'll need to protect your fuel 
if the nighttime temperatures fall below freezing. I've used both alcohol and canister stoves and both can be used successfully in the Grand Canyon during the winter. With the low sun angles, your hat won't protect you as much as it does during the summertime. So bring good sunglasses and a high SPF lip balm. I found on my last trip there I never get chapped lips, but it's very easy to get sunburnt lips if you're not careful, which is very painful. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I've convinced you to go backpacking in the Grand Canyon during the beautiful winter time. Through the desert and the cactus